Have you ever wondered how Netflix knows exactly what you want to watch next or how businesses predict the prices for their products? Well, any guesses? Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Selena and in this week's video, we are going to discuss the intuition behind one of the most important machine learning algorithms, that is linear regression. Today, we will understand why more than 80% of the predictive modeling tasks in data science and machine learning are based on a simple line known as linear regression. Even though it seems so straightforward, this method is the key to predicting house prices, stock trends, and also what you might watch on Netflix next. We will go step by step and cover everything, starting from what are the origins of this algorithm, and next we'll follow into what are the components, and increase the level of complexity by asking more and more difficult questions and diving deep into linear regression. So let's jump right in. Remember that game we used to play in our childhood where we would try to connect the dots with our friend in class because we were getting bored? Well, linear regression is not so different from that game. In linear regression, we try to find the best fit line or a single line that is so perfect that it is very close to all the points that are lying in our space or our sample space. This line is then used to find the trend in the data. Suppose you know the size of a house, then using this line you can estimate or predict what the price of the house will be. But who even thought of fitting a line through data in the first place? Like why would they even come up with this algorithm to predict things using a line? Well, it all dates back to late 1700s, when two great mathematicians changed the way we perceive and understand data forever. At just the age of 18, Carl Friedrich Gauss, a mathematical prodigy from Germany obsessed with numbers and patterns, was obsessed with the problem of predicting the movement of planets. But how do you predict something so precise with scattered observations? Gauss realized that if he could find a way to connect all these planets with a line, he would be able to predict where the planets would move next. And this led to the discovery of the famous method of least squares to minimize the error in our predictions, and hence led to the formation of the algorithm called linear regression. Now that we have understood what linear regression is and how it came to be, we can now dig deeper by asking more and more complex questions to understand the topic better. Suppose you are going to buy a house and you want to generalize the amount it would cost for you to buy the house based on the size. Then you can use this equation of y equals mx plus b, where x will be the input that is the size of the house, m will be the slope which tells how will the price of the house change based on the size of the house, and b is the variable that tells you that is the price of the house given x as 0. But we can't just randomly plot this equation, right? Like, we don't know what m is, what x is, what b is, or y is. Then how do you get to know all this? How does the algorithm train? Well, for that, you need a lot of data, a lot of training data on which the model can predict how to find the best fit line. We have all these values of x's and y's already present with us based on what the house prices were for the given sizes. And so by using this previous data, we find a guess or an estimate of what it will be like. And for that, we need to form or plot a line. But how does it decide what the best line is? Well, for that, it first plots a line and then checks the values of the different points on the graph. And then it adjusts the line according to how much difference is there between the different points and the line. It tries to reduce the error or the separation between the points and the line to the minimum value. And when it achieves that, we find our best fit line. This is done using the method of least squares. To implement the method of least squares, we first find the error term or the separation between each dot and the line and then we square it and then sum all of these squared distances and hence find the minimum value giving us the best fit line. So now we know that we have to find a best fit line. We also know that we have to use the method of least squares. We know that we need to find the separation between the points from the line, then square it, then add it. But how do you minimize this value? 
how do you get it to its least amount? How does the algorithm adjust the slope and the intercept? Well, that's a great question. And it is done using the concept of gradient descent. Here is a simple way to understand gradient descent. Suppose you are standing on top of a hill and your goal is to reach the bottom of the hill. This is the goal. Now you start taking steps. You take small steps down and down and down. As you get closer, you're getting closer towards your goal. You're minimizing the error. Similarly, in the algorithm, when you're on the top, you are at max error of the least squares. Your error value is maximum. The points are at maximum distance from your line. But as you go down and down, you get better variables for the slope and the x-intercept. And the line becomes better and better. And as soon as you reach the bottom, that is the minimum value, you get the best fit line. So suppose now the uh, points are at maximum distance and here is your line. But as you go down, as you minimize the error, you this line adjusts itself accordingly so that now the points are at minimum distance. And that is what gradient descent does. It reduces your errors step by step. Can linear regression handle data that doesn't follow a straight line? Or let's say you have a graph in which all the points are just plotted anywhere and they do not follow a straight line. Maybe they follow something like a curve. Well, in that case, no. Linear regression is not the suitable algorithm for it. You can go for other algorithms like polynomial regression or the other ones that are mentioned in machine learning. In real world scenarios, the outcomes are often influenced by more than one factor. For example, over here, as you can see, the equation is y equals m1 into size plus m2 into bedrooms plus m3 into age plus b. This means that the price of the house not only now depends on the size, but the number of bedrooms and also the age of the house. Similarly, these factors can increase. It can also include the location of the house and so on. So how does the line look like with more than two variables? Well, when there are two variables, it is a line, a simple line in 2D space. But when there are three variables, then it becomes a plane or a hyperplane in multidimensional space. And when there are more variables, we just can't visualize it. That is all for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and got to learn something more about the famous algorithm of linear regression. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you again in the next video.